Justin Jackson leads off. Torrey Hunter bats second. Miguel Cabrera hits third. Prince Fielder, Victor Martinez, the DH. Johnny Peralta's at With Alex Avila doing the catching. Omar Infante at second. And that means Don Kelly gets the start tonight. And Iglesias begins the evening on the bench. The Tigers have a lead late. We'll see Iglesias in the game at short. Opening pitch brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And while we look at the right-hander, Clay Buckholtz, a reminder for coverage of this game in Spanish, please tune in to Fox Deportes. Amigo, what do you have on Clay Buckholtz? Well, Clay Buckholtz saying he never dreamed that he would get off to the type start that he got off of to this year. He won his first 11 decisions. Then he was on the disabled list for three months. He has natural movement and the touch and feel that he developed in his three starts since coming off the disabled list is enough to warrant the second game start tonight for Buckholz. So they've tried to build up his arm strength since being on the disabled list for as long as he was with the shoulder ailment. Actually had inflammation in the bursa sack up there and they had a lot of starts and stops trying to get him healthy but here he is at the most important time of the year the four keys to the game for game two Tigers are playing with Fenway money right now the Red Sox it's very simple if they win tonight they're one and one and they go to Comerica Park on Tuesday afternoon to face Verlander however if they lose they're down 0 2 and face Verlander they're the two managers Leland was on your left John Farrell on your right glad you're with us on a great fun day of sports on Fox here we go game two Ball one outside. Austin Jackson, 15 strikeouts this postseason. He is so sick and tired of announcers talking about how many strikeouts he's rung up during October. That's to the right side. Try and get out of play and well. Strike one. Defensively, the Red Sox stack up like this. Gomes is in left. In center, it's Jacoby Ellsbury. In right, it's Shane Victorino. Around the infield, you've got Middlebrooks, Drew, Pedroia, and Mike Carp at first. Napoli starts the night on the bench. He struggled against Scherzer. And Saltalamacchia starts behind the plate. He came on late last night. Ross got the start. Here's a 1-1 to Jackson. 2-1. You'll notice the pace with the pitching of Buck Holtz. He is very deliberate. Not a get it and throw it kind of guy. Here's his 2-1 pitch. Jackson takes outside again. It's 3-1. Austin trying to get on in front of Torrey Hunter, who's backed up by Miguel Cabrera behind him, then Prince Fielder. Three one from Buckholtz. Hard hit. To his left, Drew. One up. Open umpire tonight is Rob Drake. He has seen five pitches come his way. He's called three out of the strike zone. He has seen a foul ball now a ground out. Ron Culpa's at first. Alfonso Marquez at second. Dale Scott at third. Dan Iasonia and left. And Joe West is enjoying his time down the right field line near the Fenway faithful after his night behind the plate last night. Here's Torrey Hunter. Strike one. A lot of talk, Tim, about the strike zone last night, but when you certainly read about a lot of it today with the number of strikes that were called, the check swings for, against, however you want to look at it, but there's not anybody we talked about or talked to with regard to the Red Sox who thought the strike zone was unfair, who thought there were too many strikes called. They, they thought Joe West had a fine ball game. John Farrell said it best. He said, we lost one to nothing last night. Joe West had nothing to do with it. Anibal Sanchez certainly did with six innings, 12 strikeouts, then Albuquerque, Vera, Smiley, and Benoit. Yeah, the Tigers' bullpen last night was sensational. 
Here's an 0-2. A strikeout for round number two. That ball really went down. Out of the strike zone, a perfect 0-2 pitch. In a perfect position. Batter is Miguel Cabrera. You said it last night, Joe, that Miguel Cabrera looked better. He was smiling. And it looked like he felt better tonight before the game. He looked better than he did last night. It's good news for the Tigers. The game's best hitter. He's reached base in 30 straight postseason games. Trying to drop one into center. Cannot. Ellsbury there. And a perfect first for Clay Buckles. Bottom of the first. 21 game winner. Scherzer to the hill for the Tigers. No score. Jacoby Ellsbury leads it off in center. Then it's Shane Victorino in right. Dustin Pedroia. David Ortiz. Same first four as last night. Then it changes. Mike Carpet first. Johnny Gomes in left. Jared Saltalamacchia does the catching. Stephen Drew hits eighth. Will Middlebrooks at third, batting ninth against Max Scherzer, one of the most mild-mannered, nicest guys you can meet in any walk of life. And then he gets on the mound, and something else takes him over. Things change, and that's the story of his season. A great change this year, and that slider has really helped. Tigers best at controlling the running game. We'll talk about that throughout the early innings. It could be pivotal if one or two of the first three Red Sox get on base. That didn't happen last night. Ellsbury, Victorino, Pedroia, a combined 0 for 10. With seven strikeouts. The night starts with a strike. There's that top group. When they're getting on base, they're using their legs, they're stealing bases, they're putting pressure on a pitcher and a defense, and then you've got the middle of this lineup. Well, that's why the Red Sox were the best team in the American League record-wise, and why they led baseball and run scored. That's outside a ball and a strike. Red Sox also 44 and 22 after a loss. Very consistent throughout the year. 97 wins after a 69 win season last year. Late swing on a 93 mile an hour fastball from Scherzer. And it's one and two. You're going to see that a lot tonight, particularly from left handers, because they've got to protect against the changeup. And the fastball just blows right by them. Fastball in. On one and two. Two and two. We see 93 94 Scherzer when he gets rolling can get it up there 97 98. That's when he's charged up as he was in game four coming out of the bullpen for the Tigers. And he is a big reason why as big as any reason the Tigers have right now why they are in the ALCS. Getting out of that bases loaded. No outs jam. Without allowing Oakland to score. Two strikeouts and a fly ball to center. The 2 2 is outside, a full count. Good at bat by Ellsbury. Here's game four after he got out of it. <laughs> Looks like a boxer. <laughs> First guy he hit. Hand to hand was Verland. Yeah. Watch out. Here's a 3 2 and a chopper to Cabrera. One up. You know, Cabrera is the third who joins him defensively. One switch from last night, and that's Kelly in left, Peralta instead of left at short. But it's Jackson in center, Hunter in right, and Fonte Fielder on the right side. Avila does the catching. For Max Scherzer. Jim Leland can get defensive at times, and he has been defensive, first of all, about playing Peralta in left last night. And tonight, then switching Peralta to the infield. Oh, now 
Victorino's drill. That is, the first pitch. that is the 20th time since August 4th that Shane Victorino has been drilled. See, he can't get out of the way of that pitch. As a former switch hitter, in fact, he was talking about the possibility of batting left-handed tonight. Some might say he didn't try to get out of the way. He's been hit five times this postseason. Unbelievable. It's in six games. One on, one out. Pedroia takes a strike. When he's batting right handed, he's right on top of the plate. Yeah. Former switch hitter, and on some level, he just doesn't care about getting hit. No, I know. I mean, it hurts, and you know, you're risking injury, but he's on base. He's on base. It's what he does. <laughs> one on, one out. The batter's Pedroia. The 0 1 pitch from Scherzer. Just poured in at 94. Strike two. That's really unusual action for Max Scherzer on a fastball. It doesn't tail into a right handed batter, but it's more normally like the one he threw to Pedroia. That high riding fastball for Seymour. Wonder if Victorino's thinking about running. He's still 21 during the regular season. For this team, the Red Sox, we talked about last night, that was fourth in the big league stealing bases. Big reason why Ellsbury at the top. 52 steals in 56 tries. Victorino, 21 of 24. Scherzer, on the other hand, really cares about that guy at first base. He's not like a lot of pitchers. Two out. What a changeup to get Pedroia. Bradder will be Ortiz. We'll watch the strikeout, but finish your thought about Scherzer and how he attempts to keep runners close at first. Well, he does it in different ways. He holds the ball often. He even practices holding the ball in kind of a phantom drill while he's warming up. I have never seen a starting pitcher do that. He goes through it in the outfield. And then he takes it to the mound, works from the stretch. Very few starting pitchers work from the stretch. They normally work from the windup. But he is very smart. 14 stolen bases against him, but eight caught stealing. A strike to Ortiz. Here he is earlier, before the game. That's before he started his warm up. Practicing, taking different amounts of time right in the set position before he brings it to the plate. That's exactly right. Varying the holding position with the guy on first. They had Victorino leaning there. Yeah. Yeah. And when you do that you can have quick feet like Scherzer and perhaps pick it a, a runner off. He approaches when guys are on base, he approaches the stretch position about as intelligently as anybody in the game. Just missed the ball and a strike. Carp is behind Ortiz tonight. Last night in game one, it was Napoli. That'll get out of play. Strike two. Alex Avila, the catcher for the Tigers really reacted when you talked about what Scherzer does holding runners close by varying his delivery yeah, he really does I can't tell you how much that helps a catcher out Alex Avila threw out only 12 percent of the runners this year and when you have a guy like 
Scherzer on the mound. It is so, so helpful. So it's a game with Arnie Baylor, the first base coach for the Boston Red Sox, Victorino in this case, trying to get a read on what is, in essence, unreadable. You just don't know how long Scherzer's going to take pitch to pitch. It's a guess. Three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. Two and two. Here is a quote by Max Scherzer in the Boston Globe today. I like to hold the ball. I feel like that really disrupts the base runners. And he's right because there's a rhythm to base running like there is to pitching or hitting or any fielding exercise in baseball. You disrupt that rhythm and you got him. There he goes. Ground ball foul. And Victorino had a good jump. But he has to retreat. And Ortiz had to guard the plate with two strikes. Meanwhile, the shift is on. And the shortstop Peralta is on the other side of the bag. With Miguel Cabrera playing in what would typically be the shortstop position. in the first by Scherzer. He was stranded. Now it's Fielder. Prince takes a strike. We're going to hear from Kenny Rosenthal in a bit. Aaron Andrews with us as well. Aaron on the Boston side. Kenny with the Detroit side. Deal one pitch. Outside a ball and a strike. Prince is hitting under 200 over his last 13 postseason games and does not have an RBI. So there's a lot on him in year two of that nine year, 200 plus million dollar contract. Out in front of that, foul ball, strike two. And when you think about uh, Prince and where he's positioned in the batting order behind Cabrera in front of Martinez, he may be, be positioned or sandwiched, I should say, between the two best guys in baseball. And Prince is certainly not the guy who makes excuses along those lines. Here's a one two. Change up, got him. Strikeout number two. And out number one here in the second. That looked like a split changeup. Jared Saltalamacchia is saying what might be the best thing a catcher can say about a pitcher that Clay Buckholz never throws two pitches the same. So if it's tough for him to catch, it's tougher for a hitter to hit, and thereby explains at least some of his success. Again. The right-hander 12 and 1 during the regular season. Missed about three months on the DL with a bad shoulder. He misses here inside ball one. Ken Rosenthal is with us down on the field. And what have you learned about Clay Buckholz uh, shaking the bushes like you do? Well, Joe, I spoke with Rays hitting coach Derek Shelton this morning. The Rays faced Buckholz in his first start off the DL and also in game three of the division series. And Shelton said two things. In that month between starts, Buckholz's velocity jumped from about 91 and a half to 93. And also, and Tim touched on this earlier, Buckholz is never in the center of the plate. He's always on the outer thirds and beyond. All right, Kenny, thank you. We'll keep checking in with Ken during the course of the night. He's provided us with his insider notes, and we'll try and dig as deep as we can as this game unfolds here at Fenway. Ball and a strike on Victor Martinez. Yeah. 
That's into left center field. That ball is going to get to the wall. And Victor Martinez, the former Boston Red Sox catcher in DH, has got a one out double. And that's the first hit of the night. Another 300 season for the former Cleveland Indian and Boston Red Sox. Boy, he's a tough out. There aren't many tougher outs in baseball than Victor Martinez. This is a two seam fastball. It went away from Martinez. He didn't try to pull it, went the other way for a double. Here's Johnny Peralta hitting 500 this postseason. He was the hitting star last night. Really the only guy to figure out what to do in the batter's box for either side. He went three for four, had the game's only RBI, and two of only three extra base hits. Jim Leland is absolutely stunned. And what Peralta's been able to do at the plate after a 50 game suspension. He worked a bit in the instructional league, but to jump back and just pick up, not where he left off, but even hit the ball better than when he left at the time of the suspension has shocked Jim Leland to the point where he's forced his bat into the lineup. And the Tigers have needed him. 2 0 pitch, runner at second, one out. Hard hit base hit into left field. Victor Martinez will go to third. And another hit for Johnny Peralta. That was a fastball up. Last night, all three hits. You talked about them, Joe. Up in the strike zone. One, two, three. He's the best high ball hitter on the Detroit Tigers. And this is his last hit, moving Martinez to third base. Up. Don't throw him up. Keep the ball down. Buck Holtz knows that. So last year for the Giants, as Avila digs in, first and third, one out. They underwent a similar situation with Melky Cabrera with regard to a 50 game suspension Cabrera at the time had just been the MVP of the All Star game he was leading the league and hitting suspension runs out he's eligible to come back if the Giants wanted him back they did not reactivate him and he just kind of disappeared from the Giants ending up signing with Toronto this year first and third one out of field has got a base hit into center and the Tigers lead one to nothing on an RBI single to center by Alex Avila. Peralta stops at second. Avila has put Detroit on top here in the second inning, one and up. Buck Oaks again up in the strike zone. Avila going after the first pitch, looked for the fastball, hit it up the middle. You know, last night, the Red Sox had the shift on for Avila. Had the shortstop been up in center field, then he makes that play. But with runners on at first to third, you can't put the shift on. So Avila singles up the middle to where the Red Sox were last night with nobody on base. Now it's Infante with runners on at first and second, one out. And a run on the board for the Tigers. Right at the shortstop, Drew. The flip for the out. Double play. Ends the inning. But Buckholz gives up a run. We're going to the bottom of the second. Carp, Gome, Salta Lamacchia coming up for the Red Sox down one. The 50 game suspension trails Peralta around it was in just about every article certainly here in Boston today after Peralta was the hitting star last night he's a free agent to be it'll be talked about again but the Tigers Kenny could not wait to get him back 
and uh, and get him active with this ball club. Well, the difference is, Joe, Cabrera had only joined the Giants last season. Johnny Peralta has been with the Tigers since 2010. And Justin Verlander made the point to me last night. He is part of their family, part of the team's fabric. And the Tigers accepted him back without any problem at all, in part because Peralta took responsibility without complaint, without making excuses. They liked the way he handled it. And now he's come back, and I know it surprises you, Tim, just how locked in he's been at the plate with that many days away from big league baseball. Well, it's almost like it's spring training for him. When you think about it, 50 days off and then coming back and being locked in as a hitter, rare, particularly for an older player. Sitting 529 this postseason. Here's a 3-2 pitch to Carp leading off. It's a strike, and he got him looking. Three in a row struck out by Max Scherzer. Tonight's game on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League. Here's Johnny Gomes. Gomes is no stranger to the postseason. A guy who's bounced around in his career and somebody who is credited with helping change the feel and the attitude around this Red Sox club after a last place finish in 2012. That's upstairs ball one. May not show up in the numbers, but this guy is a winner. Winner and gamer. I'm not too sure which comes first as far as compliments to a player. I think gamer and then winner in that order. Time for the T-Mobile player profile on Johnny Gomes. Brought to you by T-Mobile. Nationwide data is going global with coverage in over 100 countries at no extra charge. And that's where he's been. Bounced around, but he's found himself playing in October while other guys are sitting at home watching or back doing whatever they do in the offseason. It's all to Lamakia waiting on deck as the count's 2-1 and one on Johnny Gomes. One out, the base is empty. Scherzer deals. That is hammered foul. Aaron Andrews is with us. And Aaron, you know more about Johnny Gomes and how he has adjusted to his role here with the Red Sox. Yeah, Joe, you guys just saw the graphic there. He said, not playing every day is a role I don't like, but I accept it. And he joked, he said, I've been on, I've won four division titles with four different teams, so maybe that's saying something. He said, is method to his madness when he doesn't get in the lineup every single day is you can't try to drive the bus yourself you can't try to steer this team when you're just in and out of the lineup but he says look i'll accept this role do the best that i can he's also the first person to throw around the world re word relentless resilient and accountability for how the red sox played last night he said we just have to forget about it and so scherzer has been able to with two strikes, slip fastballs for strike three by Carp and Gomes to start this inning, and Timmy's now struck out four straight. Wow, that is a two-seamer. Looked like it was going to be off the plate, but it came back at the last minute to get Johnny Gomes. Max Scherzer is sharp tonight, and that, of course, is not a surprise to the Tigers. Almost every start this year, he's been sharp. His first 13 decisions on his way to the only 20 win season by a starting pitcher across all of baseball. He ended up with 21. That's now 21 strikeouts by Tigers pitchers in 10 and two thirds innings in this ALCS. Salt to Lamakia hit 273, 14 home runs, 65 RBIs. Counts one and one. Three for 11 this postseason, three RBIs. Switch hitting catcher. Much more power from this side of the plate as he fouls it away, strike two. The 
there are many switch hitters who fall into that category. Actually the opposite category which means more power from the right side than the left. Typically you see it from this side. A lot of guys are naturally right handed and then they flip around and they end up being more powerful from this side of the plate. Mickey Mantle. Uh, greatest switch hitter of all time with 18 World Series home runs. Off the end of the bat. Scherzer's on tonight. Just a hit batsman against him so far and through two. With Scherzer in charge on the mound. Avila the RBI single. Tigers lead game two. One nothing with the St. Louis Cardinals to face the Detroit Tigers and Roger Maris told us two months before this the series started that it wasn't Denny McLean a pitcher a right hander that won 31 games that year it would be Mickey Lolich that we'd have to worry about in the World Series Mickey Lolich won three games against the Cardinals that year and the Tigers won the World Series here's a 2-2 that's into shallow center might drop out is Drew he makes the play at about the same spot where he made the play last night in the top of the night. All that talk about pitching leads us to this tonight's Dodge Durango trivia question which team holds the record for consecutive scoreless innings pitched in a single postseason. It's not the Tigers. They've got Way to go. Here is Austin Jackson. Hit the ball hard his first time up. But grounded out to short. Ball one. Even with all the strikeouts. Austin Jackson is a guy who is a threat for what he can do at the top of this lineup with his legs. He's also a very good defensive center fielder, which is so important at Comerica, that big park in Detroit. Mm. Well, speaking of his legs, you may remember when Lloyd McClendon a couple of years ago went to work with Austin in the wintertime and got him to go from that high leg kick to, it, to keeping his feet flat. He improved as far as strikeouts were concerned. In fact, the next two years, last year and this year, he cut down strikeouts 35 percent. Here's a 1-1. One, one. That was like the strikeout pitch to Torrey Hunter. Bottom just fell out of it. Now a 1-2 count on Austin Jackson. The nemesis of guys who strike out a lot, they swing at a lot of bad balls. Almost all of them. Right side, Pedroia. What a play! He got it! <laughs> oh, my goodness. How can a defensive play lift you up? That might for the Red Sox. Boy, do they need it. What a play! Watch the hop. Snow cone. <laughs> what a play. I don't know that there's anybody on any team currently in the big leagues that is a grittier gamer, as you mentioned earlier, that word, but somebody that this team, I think, takes their cue. Forget all the beards and all that other stuff. Oh, yeah. They watch this guy play and they get inspired. That's well put and I couldn't agree with you more. What a player. Hunter fouls the first one away strike one. Whenever Dustin Pedroia's nine innings are up you know that he has left every part of his body on the field and heart and soul. Finally got the contract extension. He's just one of those guys you never have to worry about though. No. Good fastball from Buckholt, strike two on Hunter. Pedroia did great on the initial play, then he dropped it when they were throwing it around the horn. 
I guess that's the way you want it. That's a great observation. <laughs> Outside, ball one. So he makes the fighter go to FoxSports1.com. Here's Stephen Drew, took a strike. Eight, nine, and one. Middlebrooks will follow, then Ellsbury. One to nothing. Detroit on top. Little change of pace from Scherzer. Missed a ball and a strike. Scherzer is locked up for the Tigers through next year. And so a decision coming for the outstanding general manager of the Tigers, Dave Dombrowski, how they handle that. We've got a lot of money tied up in a handful of players. But it would be tough to see this guy leave. That's in at the knees. And another called third strike. And Stephen Drew does what a lot of Red Sox hitters were doing last night, talking to the home plate umpire after a pitch that was right there at the knees. That borderline pitch, Scherzer gets the, the call. I think you're going to get a call like that when you throw a lot of strikes. If you're wild all over the place, you won't get that call. So five strikeouts for Scherzer. Still no hits allowed. And the batter is Middlebrooks. Talked to John Farrell, the manager of the Red Sox, before the game tonight and asked him if he was tempted at all to start the 21-year-old Xander Bogarts at third base tonight. And he said, well, it's always a consideration. But Middlebrooks, while he can be streaky, he's a good defensive third baseman, and sometimes we have to ride those streaks. Guy who hit 17 home runs during the regular season in his second year in the big leagues. That's shot third base side foul. Second year, but really about, <laughs> pardon me, a, a half year last year and about a half year this year. He spent a lot of time in Pawtucket. So when you, you go over his numbers, that's 32 home runs in a little over a year. Fine defensive play last night. To get Omar and Fonte at, at home plate with runners on at first and third in the latter innings. It's just not as easy to get your feet on the ground and get your foundation laid in the big leagues for some as others. A strikeout on an 85 mile per hour pitch for number six. That's that slider we talked about in the scouting report. And Alex Avila is telling us that's made the difference this year. That is 23 strikeouts for the Tigers pitchers against the Red Sox. We've had eight outs here and 27 last night. That's 35, 35, 23 strikeouts and 35 outs. Unbelievable. Well, the mid really popping on the left hand of Alex Avila as strike one hit the outside corner from Max Scherzer. That mid popping, popping. Is an ego booster to a pitcher. They love to hear that mid pop, even if they're throwing 90, 91. But that's Joe Carpenter running our audio down in the trucks, and he can crank that up as loud as he wants. Make a changeup sound like 98. Pitchers would love Joe. Here's a 2 1. That's inside 3 and 1. Ellsbury grounded out his first time. What makes Scherzer so difficult when he's behind in the count, he can get his changeup over as well as his fastball. <laughs> a 
Three one pitch. Full count. So he gets a three one fastball. Ellsbury went after a bad ball. I think he'll come back with a change up here. Jeff Jones is pitching coach on the right. We'll talk to him next half inning. He's got to be a happy man. That's up and away. That won't make him happy. First walk of the night. Second base runner of the night for the Red Sox. With Ellsbury on at first base, we talked about it earlier. How does Max Scherzer defend the stolen base? He holds the ball. With Ortiz up earlier, look at the varying times that Scherzer held the ball with Shane Victorino on at first base. Victorino eventually took off, but Ortiz struck out. Victorino out in front of the pitch. Strike one. You might say, why don't more pitchers hold the ball? Because we talked about the rhythm of a base runner. There's a rhythm to a pitcher, too. And if he holds the ball too long, he's out of rhythm and out of sync, but not Scherzer. Two 82 mile per hour pitches from a guy who can light up a radar gun, and that's that slider again. It's fooled Victorino twice, and it's 0 and 2. Ellsbury trying to figure it out over at first. This time he's quicker, Scherzer, and Victorino fouls it away. For Scherzer. Picking up where Sanchez left off last night. 1 0 Detroit after three. Blowing through Fenway Park. 1 0 Tigers lead. Fourth inning rolls in. So does Miguel Cabrera. The right hander Clay Buckholz, who David Ortiz, his teammate, his teammate calls El Flaco, the thin one. He's had a tough time staying healthy, but when he's been healthy, Five times on the DL. When he's out there, he's good. Here's his old one to Cabrera. Nothing in two. Jeff Jones is the pitching coach for the Detroit Tigers, and I know you don't get too upset that your guys don't have to face this guy that's at the plate right now, Miguel Cabrera. Absolutely not. If, uh, we think he's the best hitter in baseball. Hey, you're up close and personal there with Victor Martinez. I don't want to bug a guy who's waiting to hit here soon but uh, we'll talk to you after this at bat by Miguel Cabrera or maybe during it if we get a chance on a foul ball about what your pitchers have been able to do so far in this ALCS the count nothing and two Buckholtz ready with another ball one it's been remarkable Jeff the way your guys have taken charge on the mound and not just your starters your bullpen so good last night too well, obviously, they've thrown the ball very well. Uh, you know, we came in with a game plan, and they're executing the game plan pretty well so far. It helps when your game plan involves guys that can pitch, like Anibal Sanchez and Max Scherzer. I mean, your, your starting rotation is as good and as deep as it gets. Yeah, we've got a very good starting rotation, and the bullpen has done a great job, too, uh, as evidenced by last night. But, uh, you know, it, we got a long ways to go. Hopefully, we can keep it going. Jeff, uh, the one interesting thing we've talked about thus far is how Max Scherzer holds the ball with speed on at first base and how he varies his delivery. 
Talk a little bit about that, if you will. Well, Max is probably the best we have at doing that. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to run on them, and base dealers around the game will tell you that anybody that holds the ball on them makes it very difficult for them to steal base. It, dis it disrupts the rhythm of the guy at first base, but at the same time, it can't disrupt the rhythm of the pitcher, right? It can at times, but uh, Max works on it in the bullpen also between starts, so he's very familiar with doing it and feels very comfortable in the game doing it. Second full season as pitching coach with Jim Leland with the Tigers for Jeff Jones as he joins us live from the dugout. Miguel Cabrera steps out. The count's one and two. You've got Scherzer tonight. We saw Sanchez in game one. Meanwhile, a one-two pitch from Buckholz after a long, long look in. Here it comes from the right-hander. Struck him out. Strikeout number four for Buckholz. One away in the fourth. You know, we talked about it, Jeff Jones, coming into this series. You had to play five games, so you had to turn your rotation over with Verlander getting the ball Scherzer coming out of the bullpen in game four but I would imagine you guys don't really care how they stack up because your starters can go in any order and one guy is about as good as the other. That's exactly right. Uh, we're very confident in all of our guys and they've done a great job especially down the stretch and thus far in the playoffs. I, I remember when earlier in the year people were saying well Verlander's not right. Well Verlander's proven that he's just fine with the way he's pitched here in September and now in October. He has. He the last month of the season, he threw the ball extremely well and carried it into the playoffs. And uh, obviously, he's done a very nice job for us. One out, nobody on. One ball, no strikes. That is a foul ball down the left field line. Jeff, we appreciate your time. We thank you for coming on live, and uh, congratulations for the way you guys have started so far in this ALCS. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate All it. All right, that's Jeff Jones, who has been, as I mentioned, on this staff as the pitching coach now in his second full season and he has got some kind of talent with which to work one ball one strike and now he takes a seat next to Gene Lamont the pitchers have some kind of talent with which to work also here's a one one up and in two and one on Prince Fielder who struck out his first time and who is six of twenty two this postseason Victor Martinez he was scored the game's only run on deck. With one out, nobody on. Into the seats. 2 2 count. Cabrera struck out. So does Fielder. Two out. What a great pitch. Tailing back under the hands of Prince Fielder. Prince thought it was going to be inside. It started out inside and tailed back over the inside corner. That's a Greg Maddox Hall of Fame 2014 tailing fastball right there. Nobody was better than Maddox at this pitch with two strikes. Nobody. Arms up, strike three. Now Victor Martinez, who plugged the gap in left center field his first time, scored on the RBI hit by Avila. Home plate umpire Rob Drake appreciates Salta Lamacchia coming up with that short hop. Ball one. Look at his numbers in the postseason, hitting 400. Pretty good combo in that 5-6 position in the order for Jim Leland, Martinez, and Peralta. Here's a 1-0. That one gets away. 2-0.
Tigers have won three straight divisional titles. They're in their third straight ALCS. They lost to Texas in 2011. They beat the Yankees in four straight last year. And then they had the tables turned on them by the Giants. Here's a 2 0 dangerous pitch, and it spins Martinez out of there and caught him to send him to first. Just grazed him, and now each pitcher has hit a batter. That was a slider that came up and in and just grazing the right arm of Victor Martinez. Victor couldn't get out of the way of it. You could see the rotation of that slider. It was a good pitch. I mean, it wasn't a strike, but it was still a good pitch. Trying to pitch him inside, and that's what American League pitchers try to do. This crowd's getting tired of Johnny Peralta. Just as the A's and their fans got tired of it, this one gets away from Salta Lamaki, and down to second goes Victor Martinez. Mike Lupica is a columnist with the New York Daily News. I talked to Mike today on his show. ESPN show in New York and he said something that I thought was interesting and I agree with him he said that Red Sox fans will feel something tonight they haven't felt all year anxiety and you can feel it that was a wild pitch it puts Martinez in scoring position for Peralta Johnny's already single tonight hitting 529 this postseason and Victor Martinez bothers Clay Buckles. They'd be simplistic, but you can fake to second and third. You can't to first and home. Here's a 1 0. Drew kicks it. Routine ground ball, and Stephen Drew could not come up with it. May have taken a funny hop at the end. Either way, it's an error, and the inning will continue. Funny game, isn't it, Joe? That is a ball that Stephen Drew would catch 99 out of 100 times, particularly with the set of hands that he had in last night's game in the ninth inning. Prince Fielder, watch this. Unbelievable. That was to save two runs and keep it a one-run game. But this one, the right hand closed on it before the ball got into his glove. You know, I didn't see that initially, but you're right. That right hand came in. He was speaking of anxiety. Uh, he was a little anxious to feel that ground ball and an error on Drew. Made only eight errors during the regular season. Second error by the Red Sox in this series. Victorino had one last night. And the inning continues. Avila at the plate. He's already got an RBI single. Avila moves up a spot in the order tonight against the right-hander. After John Lester, the lefty, got the ball last night for Boston. Should be easy for Ellsbury and keep it a one to nothing game as we go into the bottom of the fourth. Boston will have Pedroia, Ortiz, and Cart down by a run. Tied a major league postseason record. Twelve others have done it. Seven strikeouts through three. And for the Red Sox, it took them until the ninth inning and one out to get their first hit last night. They're looking for their first hit here tonight in game two as we play in the fourth. The one out of Pedroia. The ball on a strike. Pedroia struck out his first time. And started a string of four consecutive strikeouts for Scherzer. One of three guys on this staff 
for the Tigers to strike out over 200 batters during the regular season. That's strike two. Yeah, that's only the third time in Major League history that that's happened. It happened to uh, Jim Cott's twins back in 67 and then the Houston Astros in 1969. Here we are again. You talked about it at the beginning. I mean, Fenway Park, two lineups that can slug, and another pitcher's do it. one nothing game last night, one nothing tonight. I mean, where's the offense? Come on. Those guys, those guys 60 feet 6 inches are taking care of the offense on both sides. Yeah, that's what gets lost is the pitching of the Red Sox. We'll have a chance to visit with John Lester in a moment. Last night's starter and tough luck loser. We'll do that between innings and play it back for you as the count has gone full on Pedroia and the crowd climbs back in it. Strikeout to start the inning. And number eight for Scherzer. So here you go. You mentioned Jim Cott. He's there with the 67 twins, three pitchers, 200 or more strikeouts in the same season. The 69 Astros, our friend Larry Durker, a part of that group. And the threesome with the Tigers. We saw Sanchez last night. We see Scherzer tonight. We'll see Verlander on Tuesday, game three in Detroit. Ball one outside, two Ortiz. Hang on, Kitty. You're going to be in the Hall of Fame within the next three years, in my opinion. I talked to Jack Morris, who belongs in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. He's not in yet, but both deserve to be in there. You saw Jack Morris pitch one of the best oh. postseason games in the history of baseball. That's right. A 10 inning win. One nothing. Speaking of one nothing games at the Metrodome in Minnesota sitting next to your dad. And Jack Morris going all the way. A 10 inning shutout. What a dramatic dramatic game. Braves on the short end of that as the count's gone to 3 and 0 here. Carp on deck. And what's Big Poppy doing with a count 3 and 0? Looking for a fastball to yank. Instead, he gets ball four outside. A four pitch walk. And the third base runner of the night for the Red Sox. All the varying of times to the plate and worrying about the runner, you can forget that with Ortiz over there and Carp at the plate, although not to say it's going to factor in here. Ortiz did steal four bases during the regular season. I'm still a little surprised that Prince Fielder would hold him on. Those are two big men in your screen, by the way. Fielder and David Ortiz. Wow. Good rip by Carp, one of the best swings tonight by Boston. But a foul ball, strike one. Johnny Gomes next. Scherzer is struck out eight. Four with a fastball, three on a slider, and one with a changeup. That's pitching. And that's how a guy can win 21 games. That might be. Out at second. First, a double play ends the inning. Moments ago, Mike Carp bounced into a double play to end the fourth inning. He twisted his ankle getting out of the box. That's why it wasn't close at first base. But he's able to stay in the ball game. It would take a lot to get him out of sure. That left ankle turned over. The double play ball ended the fourth inning. Infante with a count in his favor, two and one. One hop right at. 
at Middlebrooks. One out. Here's our chat with John Lester, last night's starter for the Red Sox. And the first question was about this team not worrying about the position they're in in this ALCS. Yeah, absolutely. I think this uh, this group is pretty resilient. Um, you know, guys have been here a lot, and you know, it's, it's just a matter of time before these guys break out. You know, like I said, the pitchers, as long as they keep us close, um, you know, the, these guys will, will definitely score some runs for us later in the game. Well, you ought to be proud of how you pitched last night. Thanks for your time tonight. All right, guys, have a good one. Thanks. Short and sweet. It's the way we do it here at Fox Sports. One out, nobody on for Kelly. Good breaking ball in for strike one. Don popped up his first time hitting just under 300 over his last 17 postseason games. Nothing in two. That was a funky swing. That ball appeared to be headed toward the dirt had Don not swung at it. No. It was a strike. I thought it was lower than that. Counts 0 and 2. Ken Rosenthal whatever the situation with the Tigers it seems like Don Kelly just perseveres he does Joe and they took him off their 40 man roster twice last year once in August again at the end of October both times he stayed in the organization the first time he accepted a triple-a assignment the second time he re-signed as a minor league free agent and here he is again third straight ALCS and he's 0 for 2 as he becomes the sixth strikeout victim for Buckholz two out So 14 strikeouts in this game. I think last night tonight for those people who think an out's an out and if you strike out or ground out or don't move a runner or what have you it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. I've never understood that and I don't understand the younger players mentality now thinking that. See that pitch dive out of the strike zone to Austin Jackson ball one. When you strike out, it's over. When you hit a ground ball, you got a chance. You hit a fly ball, you got a chance. You strike out, see you later. Into center field. So you're saying there's a chance. Yes. <laughs> Halfway through it, game two, one to nothing. Another strikeout, number nine. Make it look like a strike. And it's not. Nine strikeouts for Max Scherzer. And it just doesn't seem to matter what he's throwing up there. Everything is working. Everything's getting over when he wants it to. Everything's breaking balls tight. The changeup is disappearing. It's just all going the way of Max Scherzer. And this blast down the right field line into the corner. It is caught by Torrey Hunter. And he almost spun the wrong way. He had to adjust. And that ball hit into one of the deeper parts of Fenway Park. Joe, you and I were sitting here watching batting practice tonight and talking about the thick air. Here in New England, October 13th. This ball in the center is gone, way out of here. But not here in a very difficult play. It looks easy, but it's not. And Scherzer knows it. He thought it was gone too. Now two out. That ball had the sound and had the look of a game tying home run. On a cool autumn night, it did not have the distance. Drew takes a ball. A 1 0 from Scherzer. Up and away. That's normally a bad sound for a pitcher. Strike one on Drew. 
They still talk about the way Dwight Evans played out in right field here at Fenway Park. Shane Victorino has really taken well, a former center fielder, to what is a difficult outfield spot to play. It really is. Two and two. Right field at Fenway Park is similar to old Yankee Stadium's left field. Almost uh, Joe Torre, when he was managing there, used to talk about how you almost need two center fielders in the outfield, one in left, one in center. Same here at Fenway. Still two and two on Drew. And still no hits on the board for the Red Sox. The hit last night for the Red Sox came in the ninth inning with one out and nobody on by Daniel Nava. So in the last 13 and two thirds innings, Daniel Nava is the only Red Sox hitter that has a hit. For a team that led baseball and run scored. And a team that was number two in the American League with a combined 277 average. There's Nava. Two and two, two out, nobody on. <laughs> Give you our Liberty Mutual game summary as we play here in the fifth inning. If you're just joining us through five innings in three straight postseason games. I mean, come on. The Red Sox have to deal with Verlander on Tuesday night in Detroit with John Lackey on the mound for Boston. And so on the other side, first team in postseason history to be no hit through five innings in back to back games, the Red Sox. At strike two, but because of the pitching last night of John Lester and the Red Sox bullpen and tonight play Buckholt so far, the Red Sox are one good swing away from tying the game. Well, they had one with Salta Lamacchia, but not quite. Here's a one two. Hunter has struck out twice tonight. One for seven in this series. It's a key inning for Detroit with the thick part of their lineup up. Two, three, four, five. To get someone on. What Hunter's done. Third time seeing a pitcher in his postseason career. He's never been to a World Series. And he's had a tremendous career. He's 38 years old. He's a nine-time Gold Glove Award winner. Broke in with the Twins, the Angels, and he signed on as a free agent with the Tigers because of the opportunity to get to a World Series. There's one into center. Ellsbury has out number one. The only hit in this ALCS so far. Last night, one out, ninth inning, Nava. He tried to pump up his teammates in the dugout on his of Xander Bogarts with Benoit on the mound. Here's Cabrera. The one out, nobody on. Miguel takes ball one. Here's a 1 0 from Buckles. High fly ball into left. Back at the wall, and it's gone. Home run, Miguel Cabrera. Hold heavy air or not, Cabrera had enough to get it over the monster in left. And it's 2 0 Tigers here in the sixth.
He did that 44 times in the regular season. 44 homers. Last year's Triple Crown winner. Lethal at the plate. A high breaking ball. We talked about it earlier. Looking at Cabrera loosen up before the game. He just looked different. He's now hit in 19 straight LCS games. He's reached base now in 31 straight postseason games. Here's one to left again. This ball is off the wall. Off the bat of Fielder, who's got a double. A home run to left, followed by the double to left in what is now a 2-0 game. Here's the home run hit by Cabrera. You know, the 37-foot high wall has not come into play in either game. Cabrera taking advantage of the dimensions. And Fielder did the same thing. In a 2-0 game here in the sixth inning. Now it's Fielder at second, one out. And Victor Martinez at the plate. Bullpen quiet for the Red Sox. Buckholtz at 70 pitches for the night. That surprised everybody, including Prince Fielder. <laughs> He almost pulled a muscle going back to second. Like, are you kidding? Where am I going with a left-handed hitter up there and no outs? <laughs> I beg your pardon, one out. Either way. Victor Martinez waits and takes a strike. Martinez doubled and scored in the second, was hit by a pitch in the fourth. And now there's good middle of the order for Jim Leland. Trying to give Max Scherzer a little more breathing room here in game two. with that slow pace brings it home and misses ball one talked about it at the beginning of the game that during the middle innings John Farrell will keep a close eye on the endurance of Clay Buckholz he had three starts since coming off the disabled list in which he threw over 100 pitches not approaching that now but his stuff looks flat this inning Flat curveball to Cabrera, flat fastball to Fielder. And because of that, I'm a little surprised there's no action for the Red Sox I, in their bullpen. I am too. I was thinking the same thing, Joe. I and mean, there's not much margin for error here for the Red Sox. Not only are they here at home. They're down one game to nothing. They're trailing Max Scherzer, who's dealing and hasn't allowed a hit two to nothing. But they go to Detroit and take on Verlander in game three. And for the most part, you have a fresh bullpen. Here's a one two pitch. Runner at second, one out. Victor Martinez into right center field is going to score another run. It's 3 nothing as Martinez digs into second base. Consecutive doubles by the Tigers after the home run. It's 3 nothing Detroit. You look at the three pitches that have hurt Buckles this inning. High curveball, high fastball, high curveball. It's flat, and somebody should be up, and somebody should have been up the last inning. 
Watch where this curveball is. A lollipop. Inside part. Professional hitters like Victor Martinez, they don't miss those. Victorino over to Kevin. RBI double. Second double of the game for Victor Martinez. And yet still nobody is up in the bullpen for Boston. Somebody's running and getting loose, but nobody's throwing. Ball one to Peralta. Tozawa. They've got two long men. The Red Sox, Felix Dubrant and Ryan Dempster. We've got a bullpen that's become a weapon here down the stretch and in the postseason. But no activity. Here yes. comes a 1-0 pitch. Somebody, anybody should be up. One and one. It's like they want to get up and yeah. start loosening, but nobody's made the call. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. One ball, one strike, runner at second, one out. In a three-nothing game. Peralta. Another high slider. Dangerous up there. Clay knows it. Two and one. We've already seen how Peralta has hit pitches like that the last two nights. Four hits, all of them above the belt. Buckholt steps off. Buckholtz allowed the opposition during the regular season to hit 158 with runners in scoring position. And now he and Saltalamakia can't get together on what to throw. Here are those three pitches that have hurt Buckholz this inning. High slider, Cabrera. High fastball. High curveball. And now action starts for the Red Sox in their bullpen. That's Workman. into center field hard hit but right at Ellsbury two out two out in the sixth inning and the batter will be Alex Avila Get him going. Get him going. Avila will dig his way in he's got a one for two night with an RBI single in the second he flied out with a couple on in the fourth. The Red Sox in the bottom of the sixth inning will have Middlebrooks, Ellsbury, and Victorino. It's a four-run inning, and it's a five-nothing Tiger lead as Avila goes deep to right. And a blast into the seats over the Tiger bullpen. The pitch count may not be up for Buckholz, but the pitches are. 
Very good point. And the Tigers are jumping all over him here in the sixth. Prior to this swing, the enjoyment Avila has had in this postseason has been behind the plate. With that swing, it's at the plate. A high fastball. Two home runs, two doubles this inning. <laughs> now Infante. Two out bases empty and a ball down and away. Omar's old for two. He's grounded into a double play, grounded out. One ball, no strikes. As the Tigers have opened it up here in the sixth inning, a five-nothing game. Two and zero. Oh. Buckholtz. Brings home a 2 0 pitch. Line drive, base hit into left center field. It's cut off by Ellsbury. And the inning continues. Infante, the number eight hitter, is on with two out, and that's it. For Clay Buckholz. Here in the sixth inning, Buck Holtz goes five and two thirds. He's allowed five runs on eight hits. Two home runs. From Workman. As we think and talk about the four hits here in the top of the sixth, you have to remember that Max Scherzer still has a no hitter through five. Two on, two out. There's another strike. It's 0 2. Jackson's hit the ball hard a couple of times tonight, but 0 for 3. Ninth man to bat in the inning. This started with Torrey Hunter flying to center. He's on deck. The 0 2. Nothing but fastball so far from Workman. He's got kind of a funky delivery. Brings it up there in the low 90s, and he's trying to find a way out of what is a long top of the sixth. Runners on at first and second, two out, the 0-2. Skips in, blocked by Salta Lamacchia, ball one. Coming into tonight's game, over the last two years in the ALCS for the Tigers, they're starting pitching. Five starts before tonight, a 4-0 record and an ERA of 0.54. Opponents hit just 121 against him. Last year against the Yankees, this year against the Red Sox. That's ball two. 37 strikeouts compared to 15 walks. Six walks allowed last night by Sanchez. Tonight, it's more of the same from Max Scherzer. Counts two and two, two on, two out. Left side, Middlebrooks. Across the diamond, and the inning is over. An inning started by Clay Buckholz. And it's turned into anything but a nail biter because of the four runs put up 
by the Tigers as their bats explode on the sixth going to the bottom half in game two up five nothing to the bottom of the sixth inning brings it home strike one you saw that line that the Tigers over the last three LCS games have carried a no hitter through five Scherzer's got two of those three Sanchez last night Scherzer doing it to the Red Sox tonight as he did last year against the Yankees. Here's a 1 1. Good rip. But now two strikes on Middlebrooks. 5 8 0 for Detroit. Just an error. Those last three columns up there for the Red Sox. The 1 2. They appeal, did not go. Says Ron Culpa. He'll be working the plate on Tuesday night, actually late afternoon in Detroit when Lackey takes on Verlander. Leading off the sixth, down by five, a strikeout. That's number 10. Give you tonight's Geico in game box score. And it's almost identical to last night's. There were more walks up there last night, but all zeros in that left column. And about Sanchez with six walks and 12 strikeouts in his time. Red Sox struck out 17 times, 10 tonight. Even the backup curveball giving Middlebrooks problems. Back to the top of the order and Ellsbury who's 0 for 1 with a walk. Red Sox still looking for something out of the guys who set the table at the top. Victorino next. Ellsbury pops it up left side. It's trying to get out of play. Cabrera's got to play two out. And Miguel Cabrera, who homered in the top of this inning, goes over near the seats, hauls it in, two down. Thought that ball was going to be out of there. You see the security guard moving his chair, and Cabrera makes the play. Max Scherzer now has tied his personal best for a no hit outing his best coming into tonight five and two thirds innings at Tampa Bay in July of 2010 the two out Victorino check swing foul strike one that's a bit surprising that Scherzer with the stuff that he has with not only the contact stuff and guys make contact and make outs but the swing and miss stuff that he has and he has only gone five and two thirds innings for his most innings ever in a no hit bid. Here's the 0 1 to Victorino. It's different than it was last night, but these Red Sox hitters are still off as they try and think along with the pitcher on the mound last night it was Sanchez he he was one step ahead all night yes Scherzer is tonight one thing uh, about being down by five runs in the middle innings for a team that can run it takes away your running game two to one three to one game you still run five to nothing not so the 0 2 bounces in Avila blocked it. Avila's had a nice night, obviously behind the plate, but at it as well with three RBIs. A two run shot in the top of this inning, an RBI single back in the second. There's the first hit of the night. It belongs to Victorino here in the sixth. And that first hit in a similar area 
as Daniel Navas hit last night in the ninth inning. Left center field. Jammed with the fastball and fit to Reno with the first hit of the night for the Red Sox. And that gives Pedroia a chance to hit here in the sixth. Ball one low. This crowd's been dying for something to cheer, and they finally have it. There goes Victorino, and a fly ball into left. Back at the wall, it's off the wall, and Victorino, who was running with a pitch, scores all the way from first. It's five to one. Ball and reaching the wall is Pedroia. The crowd here probably thinking, My kingdom for a run, and they finally got one. <laughs> Victorino just flying around the bases after reading that ball off the wall. He scores easily. Flying away. And Pedroia trying to get his bench pumped up. A visit from Jeff Jones. We're only in the sixth inning, and now David Ortiz will dig his way in. Ortiz with only three postseason home runs over his last 20 games and an average under 200. Trying to figure out Scherzer. Up there ready to swing at a fastball and he swung through it. First 52 games of Ortiz. Postseason career he with 317 with 11 home runs and 42 RBIs. They love him here in Boston. The 0 1. Ball 1. Fastballs velocity wise from Scherzer all night. That's the best fastball in a few innings from Max. <laughs> Runner at second, two out. A run home and a one-two count. A strikeout to end the sixth. Strikeout number 11. But a run is on the board for the Red Sox as we go to the seventh inning in game two. Five to one is the score with Scherzer and the Tigers on top. Back after this. From and Torrey Hunter, there's a... Breaking ball from Workman. We haven't seen that yet. Hunter, who started the sixth inning with a fly ball to center for the first out and then was watching with the rest of us when his teammates went off. Home run by Cabrera, double by Fielder, double for an RBI by Martinez. Peralta lined out to center. Avila hit a two run home run to right. It was five to nothing, now five to one. And the count one and two now on Hunter.
LeBron still up. Hunter leading off. Foul tip, and that got some assault to Lamakia. Before and after every postseason game, MLB Network has all the highlights and breakdowns from the award winning analysts of MLB. Broken bat. Park feeds Workman. Good one out. Strong defense matters most in October. Catch the top two defensive plays and enter for a chance to win an all new 2014 Chevy Silverado at ChevyBaseball.com. We have one out. Here's Cabrera. Rolled the wrists and hit a home run over the monster and left last inning. That's well hit into center. Back is Ellsbury and a long way away from home plate. He's got out number two. About 403 feet. That's a guesstimate. It's 420 into the well there, right under giant glass, and a giant blast by Cabrera. Fastball out over the plate. There are very few ballparks that can hold the ball like this, including Comerica, where these two teams will play on Tuesday afternoon. He thought he had it all. <laughs> but not here at Fenway. Nope. Workman out, Dubron coming in with Prince Fielder coming up. Not only is John Farrell comfortable with Felix against left-handers, but right-handers too. He told us before the game. He brings a strike into Prince Fielder, who is one for three. He hit a double after the home run by Cabrera in the sixth. We're approaching seventh inning stretch time. Fielder is jammed. Pedroia has got time and gets the out. Cart, Gomes, self to Lamacchia coming up for the Red Sox into the bottom of the seventh inning at Fenway in a five to one game. Got to come from behind last second victory in Foxborough earlier today against the Saints with the great Tom Brady at the controls. Max Scherzer trying to avoid the same thing happening here at Fenway. Quickly, two strikes on Mike Carp, who has struck out, bounced into a double play. 5 1 game, Detroit on top. Alex Avila, the catcher, told us it may not apply here. But it could. There is activity for the Tigers in their bullpen. There's a 1 2. Another strikeout. That's 12. Same number as Sanchez had last night in game one. And it was Avila who told us before the game Scherzer's the kind of guy that if he knows he's coming out soon, tries to make the last 15 pitches of his night his best of the night as he strikes out Carp to start the seventh. He has 11 left. He threw four to Carp. Strike one on a backup breaking ball to Johnny Gomes, who has struck out twice. Strike two. Bottom of the seventh inning, four run game. A four run top of the sixth inning. Slider. Nope, fastball. 
when you're in a position to throw any one of four pitches, you're in a pretty good position. And that's what Scherzer has been all night. Fastball away. The postseason record for back to back games as far as strikeouts by a pitching staff is 31. The Tigers have struck out 29 over games one and two with outs to go. Two and two. Vila was crossed up. Yeah, it looked like it. That was a change up. May have, uh, may have been looking for it, but he went outside not knowing it was going to come back like that. It may have cost Scherzer a strikeout. That was a pretty good pitch. It was, yeah. Instead, it's a full count. With one out here in the seventh. He gets a strikeout anyway. That's confidence right there. A 3 2 slider with a four run lead in the seventh inning. Scherzer menacing this evening. 13 strikeouts to go with two walks, one hit batsman, and a run on two hits. So one away from tying that record. Are the Tigers in this pitching staff. Outside. The ball and a strike on Salta La Macchia. Joe that 1997 uh, series between Baltimore and Cleveland we did that series. And Mike Messina was one of the stars with 15 strikeouts in one game. Race to the bag, and Fielder gets there after ranging to his right. Salta La Macchia grounds out, and we go to the eighth inning of game two. Tigers lead it 5-1. to one. Career high 15, in case you're wondering. It looks like his night is finished after seven. So now he turns into a spectator. As we go to the eighth, five to one is the score. And Victor Martinez turns around, bats right-handed, leans away from ball one, up and away to start this eighth. It's Martinez, Peralta, Avila against Dubrantz, who came on to retire fielder on a ground out to end the top of the seventh. Jose Barris, the right-hander, who was so good last night. Getting loose. Barris worked two thirds, struck out both hitters he faced after he followed Albuquerque, who followed Anibal Sanchez to the mound in that 1 0 win. 2 0 the count. And now 3 0. As if they needed re a reminder, the Red Sox finding out tonight why Max Scherzer finished second in strikeouts in the American League this year with 240. Hugh Darvish of the Rangers had 277 to lead the American League. There's a strike to Martinez to make it three and one. Scherzer came into this game two and four in his career against the Red Sox. One and one this year, good ERA of two and a half. And that season during the regular year, the fifth best winning percentage 
by a starting pitcher who won 20 or more games at 21 and 3. 87 and a half percent at the time he was a winner and that's the fifth best across baseball since 1900. Wow. I don't think Max is uh, is through shaking hands yet. Almost with that attitude anybody else want to shake my hand tonight? <laughs> he goes around looking for guys. He's a beauty I'll tell you. Martinez out in front on that pitch pops it up. <laughs> Tuesday late afternoon game three of this ALCS from Detroit as these two teams head to Michigan coverage of that game game three begins Tuesday at 3 30 Eastern only on Fox and here's what the Red Sox face if they don't turn things around here tonight down two games to nothing taking on Justin Verlander who really pitched well in September. Oh absolutely people talking about having a, a, a so so year not a Verlander like year he's Verlander like right now. Just have to ask the A's. Yeah. He held them hitless into the seventh inning in the decisive game five in the division series. And they've seen enough of Justin Verlander. Whew, last two years at least. Justin Verlander, by the way, is not at the park. We're told right now he left early to go back to Detroit with a day game on Tuesday instead of a night game to get that extra rest instead of waiting around for the team to pack up after tonight's game getting into Detroit in the early morning hours his account goes to two and one from Felix Dubron Peralt is at the plate one for three tonight nine for 19 this postseason he's got four hits in this ALCS. In the bottom of the eighth inning, it'll be the eight, nine, and one hitters for the Red Sox down by at least four. In the air to center, well hit. Back in front of the wall for out number two. Peralta gave it a ride. MLB Fan Cave is coming back in 2014. Players, celebrities, concerts, and more. You could be a part of next season's team just by going to MLBFanCave.com. You can apply right now. Here's Avila. He's had a big night. Three RBIs. An RBI single in the second to give Scherzer the lead. And then he added to what was at the time a 3 0 lead with a two run shot in the sixth. It's now 5 to 1. We could and likely will see pinch hitters for the Red Sox in the bottom of this eighth inning. They start the night with Nava and Napoli on the bench. They've got the eight, nine, and one hitters coming up. Napoli's already got gloves on, bat in hand. In case, breaking ball misses down and away ball two. Came in with only three hits this postseason. He's got two tonight. That's foul in the count two and two. Jose Veras, who started the season 
in Houston as their closer. That man, Dave Dombrowski, made the deal to bring him to Detroit to help the bullpen as they were trying to find late inning relief. And it looks like Varis will be on the mound when the Tigers are in the field in the bottom of this eighth inning. Three and two on Avila. That's low for ball four. And the second walk handed to the Tigers tonight. Looking at Alex Avila, one of the few guys in the starting lineup that is a Detroit original. The reason, the trade master, Dave Dombrowski, traded for Miguel Cabrera, Austin Jackson, Max Scherzer, Doug Fister, who will start game four, and last night's winner, Anibal Sanchez. And you forget about Omar Infante, who came from Atlanta and was the real key guy in that deal when they picked up Sanchez also. There's a strike. Well, Dave Dombrowski is one of the smartest baseball men you'll run into. And you hear his name pop up for a possible successor to Bud Sealer. Yeah, yeah. Bud Sealer calling next year his last year as commissioner of baseball. That's in the right. Victorino is there. And so Dombrowski in his 12th year with the Tigers. He's helped put this team together and put them in position. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning of game two. Tigers take the field. Up by four. Pothier. The ones in charge of making that all work. There's a camera out there between the ball and strike. And then they peek out a little slots. Watching the action here at Fenway as Drew leads it off and he grounds to short. Iglesias just into the game and that's out number one. Jose Veras takes over and down by four first pitch swinging is Steven Drew and Jose Veras gets a quick out to start the eighth. Entered game one in the eighth inning struck out Shane Victorino and Dustin Pedroia and then was lifted as the Tigers were on their way to striking out 17 Red Sox last night. Been a couple of night, nights of whiffs here at Fenway. The Red Sox leadoff men now in this ALCS are 0 for 17 with 11 strikeouts. That's amazing right there. That is an amazing statistic. And the biggest reason that they've scored one run in two games. Ryan Dempster getting loose. Scherzer was great tonight. Set a season high with his 13 strikeouts. Two off his career high. Here's a line drive down the left field line. That ball's going to go toward the corner. And Middlebrooks will dig into second with a one-out double. So John Farrell sticking with Middlebrooks. He pinch hit for him last night. Tonight he lets the second year player go up there and he delivers with a double. And that double may earn Middlebrooks a start in game three against Verlander. We'll see. Fastball from Varis. He featured a very good curveball last night. And now back to the top of the order. And with Smiley out in the bullpen. Jim Leland is going to reach for behind that right field wall again. Barris got the leadoff man, gave up the double. Smiley coming in. Ellsbury coming up in the eighth inning of a four-run game. Smiley's got starter stuff. Not your typical situational left-hander. Keep in mind the Detroit Tigers do not have 
a left-hander in the rotation. Four right-handers. Here's the 0-1. They've added Phil Coke. He was so good in the postseason last year for Jim Leland. He was not on the active list for the division series. There's Phil. He's available in this ALCS, but it's been a while since he's been on the mound for Detroit. Too much at stake here, so it's Smiley. And Ellsbury. the outside corner Ellsbury didn't like it strike two Ellsbury walks way away from home plate after this and you can see why he didn't like it. it was called strike two Al Albuquerque and Joaquin Benoit two right handers getting loose here in the eighth double by Middlebrooks chased Varis Good job by Avila to smother that two and two. One would think that Smiley's in there for one hitter, and that's Ellsbury. Because Victorino has shown no signs of hitting left-handed. So I would imagine he'll bring in Albuquerque to pitch to Victorino, regardless of what happens to Ellsbury. And they have the right-handed hitting Pedroia, then the lefty Ortiz, but they like Benoit mm -hmm. against left-handers. Right. To be called upon for a four out save. Here's a 2 2. He took just down and away in a full count. With Victorino coming up. The man whose name bends all the way around his back, Al Albuquerque, comes in with two on one out in a five to one game. But the heart of the order coming. I'll tell you what is not a bad play here. Red Sox trail by four. And if Victorino can lay down a butt for a base hit toward third base, he might get it out with Cabrero with that bad hip. A strike over the outside corner. Victorino has been hit by a pitch. He got the first hit of the night for the Red Sox and one of only two for Boston against Scherzer. He's going to see all sliders from Albuquerque. That one's high and the count one and one. That first hit came with two out in the sixth. Inside part, strike two. Kirky's slider is inconsistent and it works in his favor because of that you don't know which way it's going to break that one in the dirt and Avila moving around well he's as healthy as he's been in the postseason here in 2013 and he had to slide out to stop that that's really a good play by Avila if that ball gets by him, runners at second and third in this four run ball game Checks it to make sure it's still intact. Hey. 
The capper in that four run sixth inning the two run home run by Avila. Looming large here in the eighth. Two out. He went wider with him. He just threw the slider off the plate away to get Victorino. We talked about it la last night. Albuquerque with a slider that just keeps sliding. There it is. Good pitch. Two on, two out for Pedroia, who has the only RBI tonight for Boston with a double in the sixth. But by the way, the 31st strikeout in these back to back games for the Tiger pitching, which ties a postseason record. Face hit right field. They're going to hold the runner at third as Hunter comes up ready to throw. And that was a wise decision by Brian Butterfield. Bases loaded, two out. Because Torrey Hunter was cheating on Dustin Pedroia, knowing Pedroia likes to shoot that ball the other way. With a count 0 and 1, make that 1 and 1. Pedroia, you're down by 3, 2 or 3, maybe you send him, but not 4, because now one swing of the bat by Big Poppy to tie this game. It will not come against Al Albuquerque. Everybody moves up one spot. The bases are loaded. A postseason hero of years past. Big Poppy coming up. Benoit coming out of the pen for the Tigers. Homered against Benoit in his career. Bases loaded. Two out. Hard hit into right. Back at the wall. Big Poppy, the Grand Slam. And Tory Hunter injured himself going over the wall. Into the Red Sox bullpen. He appears to be all right. Boy, that was a nasty spill over the wall. Looked like he had blood on the back of his head. What would you say, partner? David Ortiz had never homered against Joaquin Benoit until now. Fastball. He's been as clutch, maybe more clutch than any hitter in the game in October since he came to the Red Sox. I didn't think initially that Torrey Hunter came that close, but he did. It was caught by the bullpen catcher of the Red Sox. Nasty spill. Thankfully, Hunter's okay to continue. As these fans packed into Fenway, salute Ortiz after his 15th career postseason home run. Napoli off the bench to pinch it. Two out, nobody on. Ball one inside. 
Jim Leland talked to us before the game as the Red Sox have tied it here in the eighth. About the issue closing out games. They hope for the young right hander Bruce Rondon. He wasn't ready. They tried to bring back Valverde. That didn't work. Eventually, Benoit settled into the role. And here in game two, after the Tigers had dominated, Leading into this bottom of the eighth, Benoit greeted with a first pitch grand slam hit by Ortiz. One and two. of despair my gosh Bill Cote the lefty Rick Porcello the right hander that is foul let's go back first and second and two outs the single by Pedroia to right field Ryan Butterfield the third base coach up with the stop sign Knowing that one swing of the bat could tie the game, and it did. And Hunter did everything he could. All out. Able to continue now. Another one, two to Napoli. And another foul ball out of play. This inning has seen four pitchers. The 38 year old Tory Hunter over the wall and right along with a baseball as Napoli keeps it one and two. Scherzer went the first seven. Varis got the first out on the first pitch to Drew, gave up a double to Middlebrooks. Smiley walked the only man he faced, Ellsbury. Albuquerque got a strikeout, allowed the base hit to Pedroia. Benoit came in. And David Ortiz got him. The strikeout ends the eighth. Season history. Napoli stays in the game at first. Koji Uahara takes over. He's been virtually unhittable since the first of July. It's a 5 5 game in the ninth. Uahara since July 1st, an ERA of 0.41. <laughs> the control is remarkable. Strike throwing machine. 58 strikeouts compared to two walks. On deck, Austin Jackson. After Jackson, Torrey Hunter. 5-5 game. Kelly. Off balance. Pops it up. Pedroia, one out. To go back into the bottom of that eighth inning, Tim. Scherzer comes out after seven. You've got a 5-1 to one lead. Varis goes a third of an inning, gives up the double. He's out. With the left-handed hitting Ellsbury coming up, so you go to Smiley. Right. Then the walk. Now Victorino, who's only hitting right-handed, so you go to Albuquerque. He gets the strikeout, gives up the hit. And then because, as we mentioned, as Jackson takes a strike, Benoit is good with the change-ups and the off-speed stuff against left-handed batters. He comes in to face David Ortiz, throws a first-pitch fastball, 
and Ortiz ties the game. David Ortiz did not allow Benoit to get that far to throw him the split. Hopped on that first fastball for a home run. How dramatic was that? On to the count on Austin Jackson. So as far as managerial moves is my point. It made sense. Sure. Of course it did. Drop for the four out save. Six straight strikes from Uehara. And two out here in the ninth. And now somehow after flipping over the wall and right and into the Red Sox bullpen. Hunter talking to Salt Lamaki as he digs his way in. Somehow he's able to keep playing. Not a ball yet. Seven strikes out of the right hand of Koji O'Hara. Strike one on Hunter. Who steps out? It'll be Gomes, Salta Lamacchia, Stephen Drew for the Red Sox in the bottom of this ninth. And we're headed there now. Drew puts it away. And we go to the bottom of the ninth inning and get in relief of Benoit. 5 5 in the bottom of the ninth inning. And here's Porcello with two relievers left behind him. But in essence, Jim Leland has a guy to give him length here, conditioned as a starter. And here he is in the bottom of the ninth of a 5-5 game. Not only starting the ninth, but if it goes into extra innings, starting whatever would be extra innings also. Another guy who could mean a lot right here in the bottom of the ninth. We saw it last night. Quentin Berry, the pinch runner, who has not been caught stealing in 28 attempts. Good fastball from Porcello. Strike one on Johnny Gomes, who was struck out three times tonight. Happy to see the end of Max Scherzer, who threw 108 pitches tonight. Dominant will not get a decision. Ball one. Strike two. Red Sox fans have not been interested in using or seeing the Red Sox use a pinch runner since 2004. In game four, Red Sox against the Yankees with Dave Roberts came in and stole the biggest base in Red Sox history. And he threw out the first pitch tonight. Yeah. The one two. Shattered back from the hole. Iglesias safe at first and now the ball goes out of play and down to second will go Johnny Gomes. Guarding the line was Cabrera. The throw was wide by Iglesias. No way Jose could make that play. Iglesias trying to do too much. Here's a game summary. We're in the bottom of the ninth inning. The Tigers won last night one to nothing. They led five to nothing, then five to one tonight. Scherzer had a no hitter going through five and two thirds. He was brilliant. But in the eighth inning, four pitchers step to the mound. Tigers and on the first pitch from Joaquin Benoit Big Poppy David Ortiz tied this game with a grand slam I don't think you've been here either no sacks all year for Salta Lamacchia winning run at second Salta Lamacchia takes a ball because Johnny Gomes is at second instead of first Barry's not in there
The 1-0. Two and zero on Salta La Macchia. Stephen Drew on deck, and Barry may still factor in on that bench for the Red Sox. Yeah, I don't think Porcello's going to come in to Salta La Macchia. This could be a pitch around situation. Try to make him chase a bad ball out of the strike zone away. He walks him, he walks him. Off the end of the bat, popped up. Right side for Fielder. Has room, but he missed it. And there's no interference from the fan. Fielder had a clean play on that ball and did not make the catch, but Jim Leland's going to argue anyway. I think he's got an argument. It's right on the border. If you reach into the stands and drop the ball, no harm, no foul. If, however, you try to make the play outside the stands, then it would be fan interference. I think you might have the umpires get together here. Nope. Well, the first base umpire, Ron Culp, was right there. Yeah, that's true. He's got help from Joe West, the crew chief, if he needs it. And I think every replay we've shown, even though the fans' hands were close, nobody really interfered with Prince Fielder. It's a good point. He just missed it. Yep. And the count two and one. That gets away, and the winning runs at third. How many times have we talked about it during the regular season, Joe? When pitchers try to pitch around guys, they end up throwing a wild pitch. You can see Alex Avila setting up inside. The pitch was way outside by Porcello. It's a wild pitch. Johnny Gomes goes to third. It's a wild pitch, winning run 90 feet away. Salt to the Macchia at the plate. Infield is in. Outfield comes in. And time called. Jim Leland does have the option of walking the bases loaded, walking Salt to La Macchia and Stephen Drew to pitch to Will Middlebrooks. But they are pitching to Salta La Macchia. Behind on the count, three and one. That's a base hit. Red Sox win it. This series tied in a game apiece.